Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is my channel Artith Design where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, I am so happy that you came back to talk counted cross stitch and kitschy Christmas crafts with me. This week I have some finishes to show you, fully finished objects or FFOs. One other finish that was a surprise, but I'm happy nonetheless to do that. And then because my segment Christmas crafts from the bygone era or from, you know, yonder years, I <laughs> wanted to go ahead and continue that with a couple other little cute things that I have received as gifts or that I have purchased at thrift stores and estate sales and such. And I call those pieces my save the stitches. I believe in promoting and preserving needlework in whatever form that may take, whether it's plastic canvas, needle felting, knitting, crochet, counted cross stitch, you name it, I love it. I am a millennial, but I like maximalist stuff. And the term grand millennial, I feel, was coined <laughs> and I, it encompasses me and my being. I'm sitting right now in my library space. My pugs had to be put away. I'm sorry. They cannot come out and visit today. They just kept barking. Those cars drive by and they're bark, bark, barking. So I hope you don't mind just seeing my face. I've got Bob Ross, happy little trees, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, I'm really excited to talk counted cross stitch with you. Before we get formally started with that, I would like to thank all of you who left a tremendous amount of comments and fun jokes. I got funny videos on Instagram. I got funny notes. I, the, the whole thing I never expected <laughs> my little faux pas to be so enjoyable for so many of you. What am I talking about? Let me show you. Last week, I went ahead and held this up to my face saying peekaboo and is this a goodie bag and looking all in it? No, it is, it is, it is not those things. This is a toilet seat cover and you all, I mean, hundreds of you let me know just that and I super duper appreciate it. My husband and I have been laughing about it all week. My kids are even running around going, hey, mommy, peekaboo Santa, peekaboo. <laughs> so this is going to be a great story years to come. I would have never considered this a toilet seat cover. Number one, it's not washable and it's double sided. And <laughs> I just would have never, I would have, as soon as it, you said it and I looked at it and went, oh my gosh, that's exactly what it is. But it never crossed my mind because I'm thinking, how do you clean this thing? <laughs> So more on kitschy crafts a little bit later because I cannot wait to show you all of my finishes for this week. I am very excited and happy about it. I'm going to uh, try to talk through all of them and explain all of them. And I think I grabbed all the patterns to show you what they are. And of course, I don't, I don't have them right in front of me. Woo! Okay. I am, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, let's see. I, I have been busy, I have been busy this week. My, the long arm service is still working on the two quilts for my kids. And so I don't have the quilts to show you, but I, I, got, I went on a finishing frenzy and I'm so happy that I did. I have the hook and loop adhesive tape to thank for that. And that's because I, <laughs> it, that's the generic term for Velcro. I, I, I revamped my craft area and anyway, my crafting table is super accessible and easy and I was able to just go banana pants on finishing. And with that, let's see, oh my gosh, I, I pulled out the pattern to show you. <laughs> okay, my first one is Cozy Cardinals, and I'm so excited about this one. I framed this in a standard teal frame that my husband got at one of the big box stores, the Michaels, Michaels Crafts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it around if you wanna see what the item number is, and then I'll talk to you about my little 
trickaroo for adding my floral flare here. If you can see that, if you want to screenshot that, that's what this frame is. Just a eight by 10. I took the mat and the glass out of it. This is stitched on a 32 count even weave that it has a screen printed like the little speckles here. And I stitched it with all the called for DMC threads. And I used the two strands over two on this. So here are my, my ratty tatty threads here. <laughs> but they're beautiful and I love them. I put them on my little custom thread drops and I love it. I went ahead and I was really inspired by Java Girl Stitches. Her embellishments are like perfection and with her after watching her tutorial on making a bow I felt more comfortable making a bow so I added this burlap bow using my floral wire I also used because who can't use it I used some hot glue and then I was trying really hard to figure out how to attach this piece onto my frame and I did not want to add a magnet in a washer to this. I really wanted to have it just hang. So what I did was I have the long twist ties. Uh, sometimes you can get them like with your produce like kale or your collard greens will come with those long twist ties. I don't mean zip ties. I mean like vegetable twist ties. Also electronics and toys a lot of times will have the zip ties built in. So if, if they're clean and reusable, I reuse them. Again, another sustainable stitching solution. And so just to show you, yes, you get to peek behind the curtain. I used a zip tie. I threaded it around the back so that I could hang and then it atta I attached it here. But when you, when I have this hanging, you don't see that zip tie. And I used a zip tie on my other finish that I'm going to show you in just a few minutes. I absolutely love this Cozy Cardinals piece. This is on the cover. This design was is featured on the cover of the Just Cross Stitch magazine, uh, the December 2020 issue. And this is what the picture looks like. This is on a beautiful... Angela from Color and Cotton dyed this really beautiful blue fabric. I am using this even weave. This was a gift from Karen. Hi, Karen. Thank you. It is a mystery brand. I'm not sure, but I believe if you go on to 123 Stitch, there's a beautiful selection of screen printed even weave and linen, and you can like mix and match. And the really cool thing was, so I, I laced this and... I used an eight by 10 mat board. It's like a comic, like a backing board, but they're acid free mat boards that I got from clear bags, no affiliation, but it, they're acid free. And then I laced my piece and then put it in the frame. It took me a while. The piece of fabric was exactly nine by 12 inches. And I believe it is from one, two, three stitch because it was nine by 12 and it had the surged edges all the way around eight by 10 and I had a nine by 12 mounting board. So I really did lace. I didn't have a whole lot of margin to work with on the back, but I laced it and I feel like it looks, it, it looks really good. I just spent a lot of time working on it. Ideally, this would look proportionally, this would probably look better in a Instead of an eight by 10, like in a seven by nine frame, but I could, I can just go, you know, send my husband to the store and buy me a seven by nine frame and the frugal lady in me, <laughs> I just wanted a standard frame. This is going to be up for this winter season, you know, past, past Christmas into the new year. This will probably come down mid February if not sooner, we, uh, here in Maryland, I do get, we do get snow like in February. And so I feel like it's, it's okay to have it up particularly because we have red cardinals around. So, oh my gosh, anyway, 
can you tell I've been gushing about this forever I love this piece so much and I am very happy this is my first ever wild violet cross stitch piece that I've stitched and I'm so happy and I'm looking forward to stitching another one of her pieces they're on my it's on my immediate radar should I show yeah let me show you right now which piece it is it is in the new punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine I got my copy in the mail and it is gorgeous Deb of the uh, the editor of the magazine is wonderful and I am excited and pleased to announce that I also have have a design in this issue but I'm going to show you wild violet cross stitch this is her design in this issue look at that Christmas tree look at her look at that yes please so this is on my immediate radar and I was thinking about just translating her color palette from Cozy Cardinals, doing a, a conversion, using my exact same project bag, the exact same colors, the threads, and doing it that way. And then I can have the, the two companion pieces. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think it is. So that's my next uh, immediate radar piece that I am thinking about. Uh, since I have the magazine out right now, I'm going to go ahead and show you. So my piece is this up here. It's the, um, it's Winter Puffin. And I'm so excited. So here is, here it is in the magazine. And I love how, she, I love it. I, she did such a beautiful, the editorial, it, it, I feel like every piece really shines on this issue. And it's so wonderful to see the range of skill, like what your skill set, what things are geared for. Like if you're a beginning punch needle or a beginning cross stitcher, or if you're advanced punch needle or a cross stitcher, I feel like there's a, a, a wide range of projects and I, I don't, it's really accessible. So I, I want to give a shout out to Misty Purcell. She made the cover and as well as all of the other wonderful stitchers, uh, Teresa Kogut, all know they're all lovely lovely individuals so this copy I know that most of the local needlework shops online needlework stores and Barnes and Noble uh, carry you can get this you can also see about getting punch needle permanent stitcher magazine.com about getting like a one-time subscription digital subscription all those things I'm not a representative for this company other than uh, I, my first thing and I hope I hope to be in future issues. <laughs> there's there's so many cute little chillin', just so many cute little things. Okay, and uh what are we gonna what I'm gonna show you next? I'll show you my finish. I had to start and finish this week since I have the magazine in my hand. I decided to stitch Cecilia Turner's Cardinal because okay, I can't help myself. So this is her what hers, hers looks like here. And I I originally saw this displayed the the preview that was up on the website. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna stitch that when it comes out. Well, because again, you know, hashtag stitch all the cardinals. So I went ahead and I started and finished this project. I have not ironed it yet. I made so many mistakes, but I am, I am trying, my mantra right now is to not be in that perfectionist mode where it's debilitating because done is better than perfect, okay? So let me explain. <laughs> Here's my finish. I was stitching along and I thought I was adding this part right here um, to the body. No, I ended up adding it to the tail. If you see the tail here is supposed to be thin here. Well, I accidentally added the, the little loopy loops down here on the tail. Well, I don't have time to pick things out. I, I just wanna keep moving forward. So I just embraced the flaw, continued on, the tail is thicker, which meant I had to add an additional row of stitches here for the tree. And then I had to modify the tree trunks down here where the tail is thicker. That's okay. I just kind of 
worked it a little bit and now it's officially an Amanda May finish. I stitched this on a mystery piece of linen fabric. I had zigzag cornered my edges and then I anything that I cut out, um, little pieces of linen, I have my scrap pile so that if I wanna do a quick ornament, I can just grab from that pile and stitch. If I have anything raw edged and it's small, I will not grab it because I stitch in hand and then I get like flyaways everywhere. It's just me. It's not something you have to worry about if you do, if that doesn't bother you. But for me, I will much rather, I'll grab something that's already been sewn down versus something that hasn't, if that makes sense. And that's just a personal preference. So I grabbed this mystery piece. Yes, I could have probably grabbed a smaller piece of fabric, but that's okay. And I grabbed the chocolate mousse from Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. And the DMC equivalent is uh, 611. And then I used some of, and I, I'm running dangerously low. I'm gonna have to go ahead and order some more, I think, the Trenway Silks. I used the bulk of this red on my cardinal for the Home for the Holidays cardinal that I had finished recently. I So I, I grabbed this piece I stitched. I don't know if this is a 32 count or a 36 count. I did not ca calculate it, but I decided to stitch it with one strand. And I think the coverage looks really lovely with one strand. So I'm happy. And so there, I had a start and a finish since last week. Two cardinals. <laughs> All right. I have two more finishes and a whip to show you or a couple whips. So let's, I guess we'll do finishes. I'll do another finish here. Let me move the cardinal and my little bling out of the way. And then I will grab this one. Okay. Here is my framed Blessings Be Thine. I stitched this last year and, or earlier this year? I don't remember, it's been so long, but I really wanted to have it done and framed for the holiday season. I stitched this on a piece of the old Weeks Dye Works before they changed their base to Zweigart. And it was very floppy. <laughs> I used Cayenne, which is, I believe, one of my favorite over-dyed reds. And I learned about Cayenne from Anne at Dying to Stitch. Her needle workshop was the first one I ever physically went into. She told me about that. I was so inspired. I bought the cayenne from her. I stitched this in cayenne. And then my Happy Holidays gift bag, this is also in the December issue of Just Cross Stitch, is stitched with cayenne. So thank you, Anne. <laughs> I, oh, I love this piece. I, this was my first Christmas sampler. And I did not include all of the little doodads. Um, it, this one is in the, the home, uh, the home for the holidays book. Uh, let me see if I can show so you can see like the difference in the pieces. And I want, I literally want to stitch every single thing in this book. So here we go. Blessings be thine. So she had, you know, Bar Barb, Alma, the, and then the date. I did not add those initials and the date. I I did, I did keep the bird. Oh, I did put the A's. So my husband is Adam and I'm Amanda. So I did put A, A um, for that. So I did do that. I did, again, I, lo I love mistake er, mistakes. I, I don't love mistakes. I've been working with mistakes. I, I did this T a little over, as you can see, it doesn't line up. But I felt like that stayed true to many samplers that people, you know, young children long ago, <laughs> their first sampler, usually, you know, they'd have errors, they'd have mistakes. So I feel like I'm keeping with the sampler tradition and incorporating my mistakes and proudly displaying them. <laughs> and I love it. So here we go. I put this in a standard 10 by 10 frame. I got this frame online. I have, I have the link 
and some photo resources on my Amazon page. And that's, I'll have that below. So that, again, it was just a, uh, one of the standard frames. It came with like a plastic film, not glass, but it, to mimic glass, I just took that out. So this is not behind glass. And I, again, I laced this piece here. I'm just gonna open up the back because it's really easy to show. Uh, I laced this piece and I'm really happy with how it looks. I did not cut my extra fabric or anything. I am using, uh, I used the Sulky acrylic, the 12 weight acrylic, and then not a tapestry needle, but like a sewing needle to lace this across. And I'm really, like I said, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I feel like I'm getting better every time, learn, you know, with lacing and finishing. And I, I have to credit Floss Tube and all of you um, who have taught and inspired me for finishing. I really, I'm, I, I feel a lot more confident. So, <laughs> oh, I love the tutorials. So I'm just, sorry, I'm just putting the back of this on. So that was my home for the holidays piece. All back in, ready to go up. And then my last finish, oh, we'll wait on that one more minute. I will show you a couple of things I've been working on this week. I started working some more on my bouquet of sunshine. I am just stitching this section of the sunflowers rather than the entire sampler. I had several questions about this because I'm sorry, I forgot to show the magazine last week. This is in the back issue of the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, July, August, 1992 issue. This, it's also in the 101 best cross stitch designs for Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine book. But unfortunately that is out of print and it's really pricey. So if you wanna keep your eyes out for this back issue, you know, this is, so this is the spot that I'm gonna do. Oh, and it's almost December and someone is still mowing their lawn. I apologize for the sound of the lawnmower. One of the interesting things about Maryland is like you have to sign when you buy a house here in this county, I had to sign something that said, I recognize that there will be noise from industrial farm equipment and that the tractors have the right of way on the road and like all this stuff that I never even thought of. <laughs> Every time there's a farm down there. Anyway, okay. Let me show you what I worked on. <laughs> I have this in my bag that I made this year with my beautiful gifted lace from Diana of It Is Kismet Stitches. I have it also because she's taught me well on the luggage tag, the It Is Kismet luggage tag. And then I use my jewelry bags, the, and then use my hole punch and made my own like impromptu floss away bags. I have this, I'm using all the called for DMC, but not the called for linen, not the, and, <laughs> excuse me excuse me mm. I'm making a really good progress on this piece I am so excited I see the light at the end of the tunnel with this piece and I feel I, I'm, I'm feeling that what's it called I'm feeling propelled to to finish it but I don't know I say that right now, but then tonight I might not stitch on it at all because I'm fickle. I know that many of the floss tubers, they don't say fickle, they say, oh look, a squirrel. <laughs> so, <laughs> here we go. Um, this is how far I got. I, I got the second sunflower almost done. I add some more of the little periwinkles here. This is from a highlighter pen, the retractable. My kid put it and it bled down. What are you gonna do? Making memories. I love this piece so much. So I just need to add that third sunflower and then all of these little bits and bobs here. And then there's a lot of like back stitching for this little flower 
not a cartouche. I can't think of the name where it's got all the little curly cute thingies. Anyway, you know, back stitching you that finished stuff. I, so I worked on that. I've been really wanting to work some more on my Barbara Lavalli piece that I got from the Quilted Raven. And unfortunately I have not worked on that. I wore her pin today, her Barbara Lavalli art. You know, it's indigenous, it's um, Native American Awareness Month. And so I'm wearing that and I decided to work on my pattern from Sitka Stitches, Gale. Uh, this is a oldie but a goodie, and it is called Totem. I did my own thread conversion with this. I'm very happy with the thread conversion. I'm using just a combination of DMC and Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. It's, I know, not very fancy here. It's here, the Victorian Motto is the Vintage Aqua. She's got a bunch, she had a bunch of different Vintage Aquas at one point. Um, and then the 783 DMC 920 and then the 3371. So it's just four colors, super, super, super easy. It's anyway, let me just show you. So <laughs> this is as far as I, I've gotten. I am moving onto the center. So I have one wing almost done here and then I'll continue down. And then I think I'll do the last wing at the end and move over. I'm really happy. I did not leave myself a lot of space here. No, I'm living dangerously. But my thought was I was going to integrate this into like a wall hanging or some sort of, or a project bag. It's not gonna be framed. It's gonna, and then I even thought, what if I did a, a stand up, like the um, Twisted Stitcher Mana. She's done some really beautiful stand up finishes and I thought what if I did a stand-up and that would be my first time attempting a stand-up and then I would put you know the, the stuff on the bottom to help weight it down and stand up so we shall see I'm really happy with this it's stitched on it's um it, it reminds me of a fiddler's cloth but it's like an even weave and this is also a mystery I'm not sure but I'm stitching two threads two <laughs> two threads over two strands of linen or even weave <sighs> excuse me i'm feeling all discombobulated having that lawnmower going it's almost winter people are mowing their lawns okay are we ready those are those were all the projects that i worked on this week but i'm so excited i this is my last finish this is okay where's the paper okay the light by barbara anna this was one of her her freebie charts from her the be well in stitch I stitched her other chart that she had I showed that a couple months ago so this one I have it done I'm so excited oh, all the things I sent my husband out to get the, when he got the teal frame for cozy cardinals he picked up this frame for me for her and oh my gosh I love this so much so I decided to frame her in an eight by 10 frame. This is another time where she probably fit wise would have looked better in a seven by nine frame or a six by eight frame where I could have gotten her closer or gotten like a cool mat that wrapped around, you know, all the things. But what I decided to do was since I had this really cool Christmas ornament, I decided to add some more embellishments, including the juniper berries, which correspond with the juniper berry look here. I And I added a couple of miniature ornaments and picks and all of this stuff. Oh, I love it. And, <laughs> and then the, I added a brown bow. You can't really see it and that's okay. I'm not, I'm not looking for anything. <laughs> But I was I put it here, understanding that the 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 difference between the bottom and the top is it's not equidistant. So I knew that if I had this hanging, it would give the illusion that that space maybe isn't so large. At least that's my hope. I might just be 
allowing my frugality to cloud my judgment. It's very possible. I stitched this all with sulky 12 weight cotton petites, except for her little freckles that I used old tattered flag, an old tattered flag color. And that was purely because my son fell asleep on me. I wanted to get this project done. The sulky color I needed was not in sight. That's why I did it. If you are interested in this thread conversion, I have it on my blog and in my Gumroad store, and it's under ask, it, it's oh, insert a fair price. What does that mean? So it'll have a zero and a plus. If you enter zero, which is totally fine, you get it for free. If you wanna enter 99 cents, or if you wanna buy me a coffee, you know, enter $4 or $2, or you wanna buy me a house and you wanna enter that amount. <laughs> you just have to physically enter with your keypad, your keyboard, a number, zero or up. <laughs> so that's how that works. I don't mean for that to be confusing at all. And I, I hope that you, if you decide to use the conversion, that you like and enjoy it. It is stitched on a 36 count chickpea linen by Kitten Stitcher. I don't know if she's dyeing it anymore. I also don't know if this was a fabric that her son from Graham Cracker Fabrics, if it's one of his or if it's one of hers. I got the fabric as a store credit trade when I, I participated in her samplers yesterday and today online magazine or zine, Z-I-N-E. It's still available to purchase and download on her site. I have a design in her magazine that she actually model stitched, but as payment, she asked, you know, would you like cash or would you like store credit? And I was like, store credit, please. So this was one of the pieces of fabric that I got. So that's the story. I know long winded, but <laughs> I love this so much. I, I've said it before. I will say it again. Barbara Anna is, I, I believe is one of my favorite designers. Wow. Violet cross stitch, man. She's, She's getting on up there in my favorites. Of course, I enjoy Blackbird and it's been really fun to try all the different designers because everyone kind of has a different way of charting, a different type of color palette and theme and direction. So it's been really fun. And I, 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 I'm loving this journey for me. <laughs> Okay, if you are all done, you, you're all done seeing cross stitch stuff, I can say see you later, Scootaloo, hasta la vista. If you want to see some more vintage Christmas crafts, I'm going to go ahead and start that right now. This is not all my stuff. No, I'm not a hoarder. I am just deeply passionate and I'm curating my collection of needlework. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yes. <laughs> All right. The first thing I want to show you is this bell. This is a <laughs> this is a plastic canvas needlepoint bell. It's three dimensional. It's hanging with the look the wire. This looks like a seven count mesh, and it's got and it's all cut out and then put together. It's got, the bottom is like wire and then wrapped around. I am not sure if this is original or if it came in a kit, but I was gifted this last year from an estate and I love it. I had never seen a, a plastic canvas like this before. So I really like this. The next piece I wanna show you is a handmade knit sweater that I got. It has pug hair on it, I know. And this is a handmade Fair Isle knit sweater. It's nice and big. What I love about this sweater, of course, I love that it's hand knit, okay? But what makes it even more precious is that it has the original handmade tag by Mildred in here. How precious is that? So I need to figure out how to get 
all the pug hair out of this. I have, I have a lint roller and everything. I, I need to figure out how to wash it too because it, it's handmade. I don't, I, I'm gonna hand wash and then lay flat to dry. But I just wanted to show you this. You know, cherish the handmade knits. The next thing I have is a vintage tree skirt. I've wanted to put this down, but I think I need to put it with um, a pie, like with a with one of my decorative trees that is on a tabletop rather than the ground. Number one, this is vintage. Number two, I have pugs. Number three, I have children. Number four, I'm mildly like clumsy and could spill coffee on it. You know, you just never know. So <laughs> this is a felt and it's, it's glued down. The glue is starting to come off, but look at those little reindeer and it's on a white flannel, like a cotton flannel. It's got some staining on it, but I still, I think it's so precious. So again, there's no stitching around this. It looks like it was just ironed down. This this looks like something that people who are using the silhouettes or the crickets, the uh, machines to cut out, could do something really cool with like that vintage and make a, a really cool tree skirt. Just throwing it out there. But wait, there's more. Latch hook? Latch hook? Yeah, did you say that? Yeah. I didn't show any latch hook last week, but here is my one and only latch hook rug piece that I have. It is a cardinal and it is, it is a tree skirt. And I love this so much. I put it up last year on one of my tabletop trees. I haven't put that tabletop top tree out this year. It does not have uh, a slit down the middle to wrap around the tree. So I have to position this first through and then build around. Uh, so it's really cool. I'm not, again, I'm not sure of the kit, if, if this or the era or the date of this, but it's really neat. At one point I had a candle, uh, candle wicking tree skirt kit. I don't have it anymore though, but I gotta find my candle. I know I have some candle wick embroidery to show. It's somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, here is latch hook. Love it. A couple people had commented to me that they love or they had or they've seen the three-dimensional gingerbread houses that are plastic canvas. And look, I have one. I love this so much. This was also a gift. And I have, guess what I have in here? You'll never guess. I have more plastic canvas. I know, wait, there's more. All right, so, you know, ornament or magnet. These are not Christmas themed, but I still thought they were cute. So I wanted to show you. I have this a couple little things. These I have. I actually use these in my home. I grabbed one to show you. I have, this is, dip, this one looks different than most of the ones I have. I have several crocheted and knit uh, dish scrubber. So, and here's one in, yeah, anyway. Okay, so a little honey. Uh, again, uh, not all these are Christmas, but they are plastic canvas. So I wanted to show them was off. Here is the quintessential granny square. Here, I, I actually had this on my tree. I took it off to show you. This is like a candy cane holder. You could put a gift card or cash, little ornament. Easter. A little Santa's. This, oh, okay, I'll, I'll show this one. It's got caught with a candle little candle and then this look at this it these came as uh, kits too I have several with the the sequins and the pins this is on a red velvet so fun I love this stuff this I have several of these and these are the Noel 
and it's in the three-dimensional box with the little bell and Santa's North Pole so again all plastic canvas inside and lined and then I've just like two more to show you and then my kitschy craft goodies will be all done this is one of my favorite oh ah dropping stuff this is one of my favorite pieces I put it up I, I love mid-century Christmas this is a felt piece glued on a burlap made it's got the rick rack and just a, a a basic dowel and then it has the the ribbon I don't have the ribbon on it but you know you hang it from there this was in a craft magazine book from the mid 60s I actually have the book I somewhere on this shelf probably with a post-it note we're sticking up telling me where it is so I love this again I did not make this this is actually it's, I love it though so I sent my husband out and he bought me some more felt not wool felt but the like the poly polyester the stuff at Michael's so he got me like a fuchsia because I thought it'd be fun to try to make my own adaptation of a mid-century angel and then I had questions last week about, I said I had du dual Noel plastic canvas bell poles. This is what it is. So it's got the Noel with the tassel. And then the back, she finished it with the white and has it all nice and finished. So those are my craft stuff and my final one I wanted to show you is this little Santa that I got last year it is stitched on like a 14 count cream Ada and here he is and he's precious and I have him hanging up I like the the tree it's the 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 stitches for the the greenery is really nice so that's my stitching and my Christmas crafts for this week I am so happy that you spent some time with me. I hope that you have a beautiful week, whatever that entails. I hope that you are safe. I was reading some stuff on indigenous, you know, who whose land do I, am I am, do I live on? Who what indigenous, you know, people's land do I live on? And I also came across fun some fun language facts. Um, so besides English and Spanish, the most spoken language besides English and Spanish in Maryland is Korean, which I knew Korean, but the most spoken indigenous language is Cherokee in Maryland, as well as most of the mid-Atlantic. So I learned that. So fun stuff. I went through my daughter's homeschool portfolio review, which was the first time I've ever done that because we are new to this homeschooling journey and it ended with the reviewer showing me her needlework on her wall they she asked me if I had to leave a career in order to homeschool my child and I told her how I worked from home and that I was a cross stitch designer so she told me all about needlepoint and I was telling her to come over to the counted cross stitch side <laughs> I could talk about counting cross stitch with anyone. I really, I, I try to weave it into every sentence, every conversation. Thank you for affording me that opportunity here on YouTube. And with that, I want to say thank you, my friends, for spending time with me. Please remember that in these difficult times, that you matter, that your stitching matters, and that don't let anyone take the joy of stitching or crafting or creating away from you. You deserve every measure of happiness and enjoyment that you get from each and every stitch. And just like mistakes are happy little accidents, make those cute little happy little trees. You know, we, we all make mistakes and that's okay. Sending you lots of love and light and I hope that you have a beautiful week of stitching. Take care.